all and welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for being here. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Today is the second installment of my Ask the Doctor series where we're going to be talking about an ingredient that is a little controversial as well as obviously asked from you a lot. So I want to clear it up and before we get started, hit the subscribe button, share this video with somebody you think might like it, and let's do it. All right, so today we're going to be talking about witch hazel. I was actually going to save this till a little bit later, but I've been getting a lot of questions from the first episode we did. If you have not watched it, please go watch the first episode so you can know about this amazing panel of experts. If you want to watch it, I'll also link it down in the description box as well as a little box up here. Uh, but we're going to be talking all about witch hazel. Witch hazel is kind of a confusing topic because it can be in a lot of different forms. It can be in a toner, it can be in actual skincare, like in actual products along in the ingredient list. So let's break down what witch hazel is to start with. All right, so let's first start out with what witch hazel is. I have all my notes here as usual. So witch hazel is actually a plant and it is found in flowering shrubs that grow wild throughout a good portion of North America and Asia. The leaves, bark, and twigs are processed to create a clear liquid that's sold commercially as witch hazel. The plant extracts itself is also used in topical ointments, uh, although the toner-like liquid form is far more common in skincare and home remedies, which we just talked about. Witch hazel is a source of several antioxidants, many of which benefits the skin. However, one main antioxidant is a group of chemicals known as tannins. Applied to the skin, tannins have a constricting and drying effect. So that is one of the parts of witch hazel that we're going to be talking about that I wanted to draw your attention to uh, is going to support what I'm going to say here in just a few moments. Applied to the skin, tannins have a constricting and drying effect. These tannins that we just talked about compress proteins in the skin, creating an invisible film that can, to a minor degree, temporary, temporarily degrease the skin and minimize the look of enlarged pores. While this is good for short term, the long term is another story and it doesn't have a happy ending. Um, I pulled some of this from Paula's Choice website and a couple other areas that I just kind of wanted to start this introductory with. The tannins basically in witch hazel can be very sensitizing to the skin. So this is my philosophy on it, is exactly how a lot of, in my opinion, most skincare professionals believe is that it can be very, very stripping to the skin, uh, in especially a toner sense. Now, sense. Um, now, in other products, we'll get into that in just a second, but my main kind of focus here, because this is a question I get a lot, is about witch hazel as a toner. And I want to, in my best honest and educated opinion, to ask you gently to steer away from witch hazel as a toner because of these, fac these facts that I just kind of walked you through. So this is one of those things that we've talked about where initially it might be really working for you. It might be something that is really, you see some benefits from, but long term it can really strip the barrier of the skin and can cause sensitized skin. Now, if you are truly, truly oily, I do feel that maybe this might be something to consider, but again, it really should be used with caution. Uh, now, how I feel about it being in other products like serums, which you'll see a lot in acne serums and uh, pore refining serums and exfoliating serums, you'll see witch hazel thrown in there. Now, again, it's going to be on the basis of how it's formulated. For the most part, I have a very kind of mixed emotion when it's in a skincare product, uh, when it's in a serum form. It can be good, so and it can be severely drying. So you want to really make sure you check the source and the product line that you're that it's coming from 
feel free to ask questions to the brand, how is it formulated, what percentage of it is in it, um, because again, it can have the same effects as in a toner form, but it is not as sensitizing as it would be in a toner form. So I have a, a little less reservations about it being in a serum form than I do in a toner form. So let's now hear from our panel of experts on what they think about witch hazel. And again, we will start with our dear friends from the Chemist Confections. How do you feel about witch hazel toner or witch hazel being in products? Um, is it good for oily, acne prone skin? So yeah, it's definitely mm -hmm. a great ingredient. It's kind of that gentle, even though less effective, mm -hmm. um, but it's a gentle alternative to cell acid. Yep. It's really good for um, kind of like interim tre uh, treatment. So yeah. if you don't have a full on breakout, mm -hmm. and um, but you want to prevent a breakout from happening, yeah. It's a great ingredient agreed. to have. Agreed. And maybe just one thing is to just check the ingredient list. Is a lot of these, um, I guess, witch hazel toners, um, they would be considered astringents and they oftentimes put alcohol. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just check. All right, perfect. Thanks, girls. So now we're going to hear from Stephanie Kappel, Dr. Stephanie Kappel. She said, I don't recommend it. Uh, there are better ways to decrease sebum production. Which hazel can strip away lipids in the skin, which can unregulate the sebum glands to make more sebum, having the opposite effect. So what she's saying is that when you use it in a toner form, and obviously she does not recommend it in a serum form, uh, it says, basically it says here, is because... Yes, it decreases that sebum, but what it does over time is has the opposite effect because it makes you actually produce more sebum, which is oil on the skin. So this is interesting. This next one is from Dr. Ben Johnson. He says, it's fine. Nothing too exciting, but not harmful to the skin either. So I love the difference of opinion here. I think it's really important to show the difference of opinion. That's what I'm trying to do with this series, to empower you with some of the greatest minds and what they think about certain topics. So I really was interested to see what Dr. Ben Johnson thought about witch hazel. All right, so let's hear about Janelle from Lemieux. She said, they are okay but there are so many more advancements in the mist category. So she's talking about it as a toner, all right? It will not harm or damage the skin. It is a good ingredient, but consumers need to always consider not all skin responds in the same manner, and it's not a cure-all ingredient. Only good for oily, acne-prone skin in most cases. So I love that. So basically she's saying that it, she believes it's not super harmful, but that it can be good for acne and oily prone skin, but there are way more advanced ingredients uh, that you don't need to kind of go back to witch hazel, which I think is an interesting play on this for sure. And I do love that she says that consumers need to really consider that not all skin, not all skin responds in the same manner and it is not a cure-all ingredient. Because I think a lot of people really rely on witch hazel as this like end-all, be-all, amazing ingredient for acne, oily, prone skin. And not all skins can use it. Not all skins are going to react well with it. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's hear from Dr. Sarah Tonks. She says, this is awesome. She says, it's a definite no for me. Some people find it very sensitizing. Uh, you will probably be okay with oily skin if you use it, but for the majority of people, it's not useful. So again, her train of thought kind of goes along with some of the other comments some of the other doctors have said. To round this up, let's hear from our beautiful head of research and development for Exuvians, Barbara Green. She says, I have a renewed interest in this ingredient. I like the natural origin and its potential uses in different formulation types. I found her response to be really interesting because she's kind of on the cutting edge of uh, you know, research, I found it to be very interesting that she says she has a renewed interest for this. So I'll be very, you know, uh, all ears if they start to incorporate this ingredient into some of their serums. There must be something behind the scenes that we do not know. But it seems to, to me through this comment that she is interested in it and that it might be something worth considering as long as it's in some sort of serum form. So obviously, as you know, in this series, we will get a difference of opinion. And 
really honestly, it's to tell you that skin is not a one size fits all, but it's also to show you what the experts are saying on certain topics. So the consensus of this is overall, for some, it's a hard no. For others, that it might be good for oily or acne prone skin. But I think most of them kind of come with a caution of making sure that you really are careful about obviously making sure there are no alcohols in the witch hazel toner that you choose if you get that and of course in the serums but also making sure that you really be careful if it's if you start noticing sensitizing to the skin so basically uh where it gets overly dry uh flaky red patches dry patches just be very careful and that way you will know if it's over sensitizing to your skin and not working for your skin type so please comment below let me know if witch hazel has worked for you and what your feelings are about this because i want this to be an open forum of learning and expression and i am so excited to do more of these for you and i'll see you on the next one lots of love for me to you bye loves